ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot read this sign, right there, it says Boys Town, saving children, healing families. Okay, if you're in the mood for some jacked up Googling, I want you to get on your little Google machine and Google Boys Town, Nebraska. What you're going to find is a, a location in the Midwest riddled with heavy controversy. We're talking drug trafficking and children sex trafficking controversy, okay? There is evidence that in this location that we're driving through right now, these things took place in Boys Town. Now, not only is the name creepy, Boys Town, but it literally revolved around using children in horrible ways. police department over here it's a full campus and there are signs all over this place that say that the campus is closed to the public now I can imagine that's because of COVID but yeah like we have the field house and over here we have I don't know classrooms of some kind vocational center but this isn't just like a campus this is literally a little town in the middle of the Omaha metro area and we're gonna be heading into the town right now, like actual boys town. And the last time Tiny and I drove through here, we drove through, didn't see any, hello, there's security right there. Didn't see any, any bodies. Please don't turn to follow me. Okay, good, I'm not in the mood. Yeah. There's some kids over here. Last time we drove through, there was nobody. And then we turned around and came back through and over this field right here, look, and they're just staring at us. They're just literally staring at us Do again. Do you see that? Every single person is staring at us. And this exact same thing happened last time. There was nobody and then all of a sudden there was a lot of bodies. Oh, there's a bunch of people up ahead of us again. Will you take this? Yeah. I, I cannot tell you how creepy, you know, we're just, getting, we're just gonna keep driving. Yeah, just go yeah. through. Um, it's like every, Look at her. yes. The, the people literally stare like they've never seen another vehicle. It's like they almost have like every vehicle numbered and they know who to expect driving through. Every single person we're passing right now, and we're passing, and we've probably passed 10 to 15 people at this point. They're all turning and looking at us. Except for these guys playing basketball because they're, you know. Busy playing busy basketball. Busy playing basketball. <laughs> Let's see, there's several people over here. Yep, one, one of the main guys is just glaring at us. This exact same thing happened, but even, even in, in a more creepy fashion last time. Because it's just like this horde of people walking through this town that wasn't there to begin with, and then all of a sudden they were there, and every single human being turned and, and just looked and just stared at us. And it was the weirdest thing. That's creepy. I'm and cool any time. <laughs> you, like seriously, you feel yeah. it in your guts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like there's this feeling here. You feel so yeah. unwelcome. I yeah. Really, we should definitely watch that. A Republican from the Midwest, Lawrence E. King, is serving a 15-year prison sentence for a multi-million dollar fraud. But financial crime is only half the story. This is the true story of Lawrence King. It is the story of an evil at the heart of America, of a cover-up at the highest level. It's a web of intrigue that starts in our holy of holies, Boys Town, Nebraska, one of the most respected institutions in the United States, and spreads out like a spider web to Washington, D.C., right up to the steps of the nation's capital, the steps of the White House, involves some of the 
most respected and powerful and richest businessmen in this United States of America, and the centerpiece of the entire web is the use of children for sex and drug dealing and drug couriers, the compromising of politicians, the compromising of businessmen, but worst of all, the corruption of key institutions of government that have the duty and responsibility to make sure these things never happen. Show, yeah. show these buildings around here, Tunis. Like, there's some history here. And it's like a big campus. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, you guys know that I'm legit with you on my YouTube channel. Like, I'm not just blowing smoke here, and neither are these two. Like, you pull in here and you experience the energy here, and you're, you feel it in your stomach. Like, you, my stomach feels weird. Like, it's uncomfortable. Weird. It's unnerving here. And it's supposed to be a place of faith. Like, there's literally the God's Ten Commandments right there. The Garden of the Bible. And the thing about it is, when this place really, to be completely honest, when it went to hell, was when a specific minister showed up here and you started to use these kids. I don't know yeah. if he was a minister. Oh, he wasn't? I don't know if he was. I just know that he came I to... thought he was a reverend. Didn't you say reverend? The original guy was a reverend, but I okay. don't think he was a man of faith. I think okay. he just came to help a credit union. Okay. Sounds like. So, again, this is to, like, save kids, I think, from, like, homeless life and poor family life, right? Is what yeah. you were reading? Yeah, it was a... Um, a foster home for boys, abused boys, and homeless boys and girls in the beginning. Yeah. So you think that these kids are finally, finally thinking that they have solace, and then it turns into there's a kid blocking the road. Hopefully he moves. <laughs> uh, and then there is someone that is exploiting them and taking advantage of them, and all they're trying to do is live a, live a normal life. And oh, what's up, man? Um, don't want to run over the ball. So yeah, you come to this place to escape crappy circumstances that you were living in, only to be exploited and used sexually. World-famed Boys Town is in the news again. Made famous by an Oscar-winning film, Boys Town, Nebraska is America's favorite children's charity. It was founded in 1917 by Father Edward Flanagan. Is the neglected, unwanted, and unloved boy who has become a serious problem in our society. Boys Town was started to uh, be a home for orphans. That was after World War I. And uh, since then, society has changed and the problems of boys have changed. And so now, uh, it's a question of taking care of uh, homeless, uh, abandoned, neglected, uh, abused boys, and now girls also. With cash reserves of $500 million, Boys Town is the richest square mile in the world. It has been granted the privileges of an incorporated town, a Catholic diocese, and a school district for 500 boys and girls. When an institution like that gets contaminated, purposes of abusing children instead of protecting children, then you better, if you've got any decency at all, uh, do something about it or, or at least get it cleared up. Awful. And I don't know what it's like now outside of being extremely creepy, but I just needed to bring you through here to see Boys Town. <laughs> and we're And we're ready to leave, because yeah. it's... It's totally so good. crazy here. <laughs> the fact that they have their own police station here. Yes, police yeah. force. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't... Government money. <laughs> yeah, you won't, you won't understand <laughs> the feeling that we're talking about right now until you drive through yourself. King used Boys Town as a source of young boys for his business and for sex and drug orgies. Paul Banassi was a victim of King's abuse. He was also sent by King to lure Boys Town youngsters off campus. We used to just drive around and go up to what a home that's when we used to do some of the uh, scavenger hunts with picking up some of the kids. You know, just kind of win their confidence, become friends with them for a while start inviting them to the parties. The kids were 10 years old or older. In 1986, King's plundering of Boys Town was reported by staff to the chief executive, Father Val Peter. 
subsequent testimony proves that he carried out his own investigation, but that King's victims refused to talk. And this just proves that the, the energy that Tiny and I felt last year was not a, a fluke. No. Like we knew we were in a place that something bad has either happened or continues to happen. Yeah. It, just the energy. Yeah, one of the top, um, like just doing a quick Google search, one of the first articles that comes up is the Franklin child abuse scandal, stunning cover up of child prostitution ring for wealthy There's elitist no and political leaders. On that no. So, I mean, it's just, if you look up the Franklin cover up, this is what you'll find is like, kids who were being used to as like sex slaves and um, they were being traded for like political favors, things like that. And so uh, just a quick Google search brings up all kinds of results about it. Yep. And as Tiny was explaining that, we literally drove by one of the houses where these people live at. I kid you not, someone leaned forward out of their chair to look out the window and watch us drive by. Flat out. <laughs> like, why are you that that concerned by about who's driving by do people they, why do people not drive around here <laughs> seriously I, like i said it feels like every vehicle's numbered every vehicle's memorized and they know who comes in and who comes out and it's like when any anybody drives in and they don't recognize it's like red alert baby and that's how exactly how it felt last year mm -hmm. it's exactly how it felt today yeah and that's where it says boys town campus is closed to the public by the police department, the Boys Town Village Police Department. Nebraska has a very clear statute that child abuse allegations should be reported to authorities. They shouldn't be reported to the principal of a school, the director of a facility. They should be reported directly to either Child Protective Services or law enforcement. Could you understand why a very detailed report from a social worker employed at Boys Town identifying children and identifying their alleged abusers never saw the light of day, nothing happened with that. No, I can understand that because had I known that had been, I wouldn't put up with that, but uh, is that is something like that happened? I don't know. Well, in retrospect, I uh, regret having any association with uh, uh, Larry King. Uh, had I known it at the time, it would never have happened. Despite the investigation, Larry King remained free to feed his pedophilic parties with child victims. But in 1988, a routine review brought the Boys Town cases to the attention of Nebraska's State Foster Care Review Board. And the information presented to the Foster Care Review Board, either via the telephone reports, the personal reports, or the reports we reviewed, uh, Larry King's name was consistently present as someone that the youth were making allegations against. I mean, I turned that information over to authorities and nothing happened. I would say we handed over at least a foot high um, amount of material. Generally speaking, uh, the allegations were ignored. Google it, people. Look it up. There's a documentary about it. What's it called? The Conspiracy of Silence. Conspiracy of Silence. Google it, watch it, educate yourself. Boys Town, Nebraska. On the streets of Omaha, Gary Caradori and Karen Ormiston found new victims of King's pedophile network. Every new youngster told the same stories as those from Boys Town, covered up three years earlier. They were telling us about prominent people in Omaha and elsewhere that were abusing children at, uh, at parties. The prominent citizens' uh, names um, that originally came up uh, were uh, of concern to me because I knew many of those individuals and uh, I very frankly was shocked to have those names show up on the list. Media personality Peter Citron procured some of his victims from Boys Town. The kids he liked were mainly around the age of uh, probably about 8 and 13. <laughs>